Hi everyone and welcome to CX Today. Today I'm excited to bring you something that's a little bit different to our normal videos. We're going to be looking at a voice spot demo created by Microsoft software engineer Jason Shave. It combines Azure's new OpenAI platform with its communication services, call automation and cognitive services to excellent effect. Essentially, as Jason says, it gives ChatGPT voice and ears. Also, after a short demo, uh, Jason will join me alongside his colleague Roy Dehing, who is a principal partner program manager at Microsoft, to discuss it in more detail and also consider how such innovation may change conversational AI and customer experience into the future. Uh, but first, sit back and enjoy the demo. Hey there, my name is Dave. How are you? Doing good, Dave. Do you know any good jokes? Sure. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Yeah, that one's pretty lame, Dave. Uh, have you got any others? Why did the woman go to the doctor? Because she was feeling a little under the weather. <laughs> Dave, that's a terrible joke. You've got to do better than that. Oops, sorry about that. Why don't we change the subject? How have you been doing lately? <laughs> I don't want to change the subject. I want you to tell me another joke that's actually good. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. That one's actually a little better. Thanks for that, Dave. We can switch topics now if you want. Sure. What have you been up to lately? I was recently on a road trip from my home to Calgary to do some shopping. That sounds like a great adventure. How was the drive? The drive was good, but I was wondering if you know of any good points of interest between Calgary and, let's say, Fernie, B.C. Sure. There are some amazing places to explore between Calgary and Fernie, including Kootenai National Park, which offers scenic hiking trails and camping spots. There's also the Banff National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and Waterton National Park, which provides great views of the Rocky Mountains. Have you ever visited any of them before? Yeah, I've been to most of them. Is it windy in Waterton? Yes, it can definitely be windy in Waterton. The winds there can be quite strong and make for some breathtaking views of the Rockies. Very good, thanks, Dave. Can you summarize our conversation today? Today we discuss traveling between Calgary and Fernie with a focus on the scenic attractions along the way. We touched on Kootenai National Park, Banff National Park, and Waterton National Park, and the winds that can be found in Waterton. We also talked about jokes, didn't we? Yes, we did. We were discussing why the chicken crossed the road and why the woman went to the doctor. Okay. Thanks for the laugh, Dave. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Goodbye and have a great day. Well, that was Jason Shave's incredible chatbot demo, and I'm del delighted to say that Jason now joins us alongside his Microsoft colleague, Roy Dehing. Thank you both very much for joining me uh, to talk through that demo and the potential of this technology. Um, so Jason, I think I'm simply going to start this video uh, by asking you, how long did that take to create and what kind of process did you follow? Well, let's see. Uh, I think I, I created it for the most part over a weekend. Uh, now, with that in mind, I did have some libraries that I created to make the process a little bit easier, some event handling libraries in order to kind of stitch together the request and the response a little bit. I also wrote my own uh, OpenAI.NET client because there wasn't one available. So that was a little bit of work as well. But I think with these libraries, you know, you could probably put that demo together in about maybe three days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as the, the process goes, um, I, what I ended up doing is uh, the OpenAI platform has a, a playground that you can go to, uh, and basically plug in responses or uh, submit uh, your input and get a response. So I spent a lot of time conversing with it and seeing what the responses were and kind of tweaking the uh, some of the values input parameters that you can specify to get certain responses. And then as well, playing with some of the different uh, models that are available in OpenAI. Mm. Yeah, I think that that is uh, that's quite incredible. I mean, just 
two or three days to create a chatbot like that. I mean, it just shows how much this technology is changing um, the state of play. I think it's fascinating. And I think my next question will be, you know, we're a customer experience magazine. Uh, my next question will be about kind of the applications within customer service and how conceivable do you think it could be? I, I realize that a lot of these different um, tools that you've been using are not yet generally available, but how conceivable is it that a business could create a similar bot to that now to churn out answers to customer queries? Yeah, so I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the platform that's available uh, in terms of, you know, the trained content that's there it has a wealth of information available. So, you know, uh, now that OpenAI and Azure have both made APIs uh, available, uh, it's it's relatively easy, you know, with the right uh, inputs to get a, a prompt back. But I think what's missing is if you're a customer that maybe, like, let's say we start a company, right? We start one today, company XYZ, uh, and we try to ask OpenAI, you know, hey, um, tell me more about company XYZ. Obviously, it's not going to know about this brand new company. It's gonna, not going to know what our products are, what our mission statement is, how to respond to customers. Uh, it has no context. And so that's where training the model on top of the existing data set is going to be of value, right? So you can kind of imagine that um, this this OpenAI platform is like walking up to a person in the middle of the street, and they're the most knowledgeable person ever in history. They know everything, except anything about your company. So now you kind of need to train that person up on that information. Well, not only are they now the most knowledgeable person in the world, but they know about your company. So they can provide human responses in context to your company. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is, yeah, that is quite, an, that's a quite an incredible, um, incredible thought. Um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, it's, it's been quite remarkable how quickly I, you at Microsoft have been able to kind of uh, implement this into Bing. And we're hearing a lot of uh, new announcements almost by the day. So hopefully it won't take uh, too long for that to happen. Um, but yeah, I guess, guess we're kind of looking back at the conversational AI models that also that we've grown used to in customer service. Maybe they don't always uh, fit the bill almost as some, obviously we've all had uh, varying experiences with that. What advantages do you think a GPT open AI powered bot has over these kind of traditional uh, conversational AI, AI platforms? Well, I, I think it's, you know, given the, the sort of the context of the previous example, walking up to a person and having them be kind of the most interesting and knowledgeable person in the world, compare that with the way things were prior to this, which is um, imagine you have a, a fish bowl and it's filled with pieces of paper and it has responses on it, right? You program the responses. And then when a question comes in, you know, somebody has to kind of look within the fish bowl and fish out the response and analyze it and determine if it's the right response. And if it isn't the right response, then maybe you've got um, some sort of error response or default response that you would provide. So it's sort of like, imagine that these are all pre-programmed and, and predetermined, right? So not really intelligent in the sense it could be a very large fishbowl with lots of data in it right but it's not it's not the same as imagine open ai or this new sort of world is like reaching in and grabbing a piece of paper and it's blank and all of a sudden it starts filling out data as you're looking at it in real time you know or like the person on the street kind of example so it's um it's not pre-programmed it's entirely organic and dynamic which is pretty amazing Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think, yeah, it's interesting to consider the other possibilities within customer experience as well um, that the OpenAI platform uh, can deliver. So maybe it'll be interesting to bring Roy in on this one um, to and learn kind of how else you're combining uh, Azure's OpenAI platform with other solutions within the Azure portfolio to improve uh, customer experiences. Yeah, I think we, we, we talked about briefly last time and also in our prep sessions, I think, you know, CX is the new battleground and you can say CX is, you know, for partners or for customers, but CX contains every scenario in a machine to machine, machine to human, human to human. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to uh, look at Microsoft, I think Microsoft has all the ingredients to be successful in becoming that cupcake. So what I mean with that is that we talk now to Jason and Jason is uh, the engineering uh, from Azure Communication Services point of view, so it's our CPaaS platform. Yeah, 
if you talk about machine, you know, you would like to bring machine into the use case. We talk about Azure Percept and Azure Edge, you know, where we bring in the machine and IoT use cases into the back end. And then if you talk about, let's say, human, a human is using a SaaS application. And the SaaS application can be built on top of that Azure Communication Services as a custom application. But it is also, let's say, leveraging our SaaS success application that we have so far, like LinkedIn, like Xbox, um, like Teams, eh? the big hype about Teams or Dynamics in this case. So for me, you know, we have all the ingredients to position this um, and building such hero scenarios fronting the traditional UCAS and CCAS solutions. And I think, you know, with the passion that Jason brings, uh, you know, uh, he's driving such kind of cool hero scenarios uh, in this industry. Yeah, great analogies um, today. I think it is fascinating that the CPaaS element that you that you mentioned. You know, the one thing that AI might not change is kind of the need for APIs and integrations behind a lot of these technologies, and that's what CPaaS is uh, is bringing as well. So I think the combinate that combination that you mentioned is especially powerful. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's lots more that I'm sure we could add. Uh, I think we've really covered some uh, good ground here, but I know, um, Jason, you also have a YouTube uh, channel, which we uh, took that demo at the start of the combination, uh, start of the conversation from. Do you wanna quickly um, maybe give us kind of a bit of information about that and where kind of viewers can go to see more information from you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I believe we've updated the handle on the channel to be Intelligent Communications. And so you can find it. Uh, yeah, Intelligent Communications is the is the YouTube handle. But, um, you know, it was started to really uh, raise awareness and, and get people ramped up on how to use the platform. Because, uh, you know, dealing with voice and, and, and events and, and uh, you know, understanding the platform, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve there. Um, you know, some people like to read. I like to watch YouTube videos. So I thought, hey, why don't we make some some interesting videos on on the you know the uh, components of putting together some of these solutions. So, for example, like inbound and outbound calling. The fact that you can handle PSTN calling now. Uh, the fact that this platform is built on the on the great work that the folks have done to bring teams to market. It's all the same infrastructure. We're just putting the developer APIs on top of it and uh, enhancing that functionality. So yeah, it's, uh, we've got lots more coming and um, yeah, very, very excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited too for all the, uh, all the continued announcements uh, from this. I'm sure there'll be lots more. The potential of this technology as your demo and this conversation, I think is underlined is, uh, is quite incredible, but I think that's a really great place to end today's chat. But thank you very much uh, to both of you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And also thank you to everybody for watching. Bye for now. Okay, thank you.